Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. I just really wanna to talk to you really, really quickly about torches, and I know we've covered this in lots of our YouTube films already, but recently, um, I've had a problem with one of my torches here. This is one of the larger handheld torches that we use here on um, At The Bench um, and also on our At The Bench YouTube channel. Um, and I've, I've had it for quite a, quite a few years now and I went to refill it. I re refilled it no problem at all. But what I noticed that when I turned it on, the gas was just shooting out of the front. It wasn't a proper flame. It was, oh, it was to be honest, it was quite dangerous. Now, uh, over my 30 odd years being a professional jeweler, I've used many, many torches throughout my period of time. I've used uh, some of the ones called Rothenberger with small little disposable tanks. The one torch that I've used for the majority of my career is this style. This is the Sievert torch. Now this torch um, is a fairly newish one, but I bought one of these torches, I think, pretty much when I started up in my own business. Fantastic torch, it uses just one uh, fuel. This is propane. Um, it has a handle, it has re replaceable and re replaceable nozzles, interchangeable nozzles for a nice pencil nozzle, a large burner like we've got here. The advantage that this type of torch system has is that some of the parts within this torch are replaceable. You can get replacement hoses, you can get replacement um, on-off valves here. Obviously you can get then the replacement and interchangeable nozzles. Fantastic system, totally recommend it to you if you're really serious about your jewelry making career. And then about ooh, 15 years ago, I then invested in something like this here. This is the Smith's Little Torch. This is the box because we have the two torches downstairs. Smith's Little Torch, absolutely brilliant. Dual fuel, um, propane and oxygen or, B or acetylene and oxygen. Um, I use the propane and oxygen. Brilliant little torch. Again, with these you can get replacement parts for it. You can get replacement, again, on-off valves, replacement tips, replacement torch. Um, hoses and that sort of thing. Absolutely brilliant. Now, what I'm getting to is that there's not much point trying to play around with these torches. There are no replaceable parts within these torches. I thought I'd taken the nozzle off here, having a look, taking a look, see what's happened, see if the, the, the vents are blocked or whatever and that sort of thing. But do you know what? I feel that it, for what they cost and if you start playing around with torches uh, when you're not supposed to, the Sievert, the Smith Little Torch, the parts are replaceable. No problems at all though. If you're not confident in getting those parts replaced and so forth, always take it to a professional. Uh, this type of torch is a handheld torch. It takes butane gas. Likewise with these little torches here as well. Um, as you can see, I use these torches here on At The Bench, which is our online jewelry training website and also on our YouTube channel. Why do I use these torches, you may be asking? Well, simple reason is the fact that these torches are available to everyone. It looks like a chef's creme brulee torch. This is a little bit more of a big boy, this is, that gives you a bit more power, gives a bit more heat. We use these torches because they're accessible to everyone. We use these torches and you can really use these torches really well for nice precision, fine work. You can use this large torch then for the larger pieces like bangles and cuffs and so forth. So we use these torches just to show you what can be done. But if you are really serious about your jewelry making equipment and what you want to do with your jewelry making and want to make larger pieces, the Sievert torch, totally recommend. Smith's little torch, a lot more costly in the initial outrun, outrun, outlay, that's the one. But anyway, so what I'm getting to is, I was gonna think about taking this torch, take it apart to see what I could do with it, but it's safety at the end of the day. You don't wanna go playing around with these torches because they are basically disposable. Something goes wrong with them, throw them away, get a brand new torch, which I actually, I've actually done that. And here is, oh, should I put it near up? Here is the torch that I have got. Um, and I'm not recommending a brand, I'm just simply gonna show you this torch to show you how it works and so forth. Brand new torch, just picked up this from my local tool supplier. Um, I'm not quite sure what this brand is. This is uh, Rec, 
Recro Electronic Instant Ignition Blowtorch. They're pretty much all the same. This is the larger version, as you can see, and we use these quite often. Comes with a torch and it comes with a removable base. Let's get, get rid of this packaging. So I'm not particularly endorsing a brand. I'm not being paid for any of this. This is something that I have just had to buy because I cannot rely on this one. This one I've had for, must be a good eight, nine, 10 years. This is a GT6000, not available anymore. Uh, but these types of torches, this is from uh, Sistotech, uh, a good, good jewelry brand. So let me just quickly show you how we go about setting up this torch here. This one is slightly different. This has a, an aluminium body, whereas this one has a, a plastic covering to it. This one did have, or does have a base. Uh, it's very simple. You just simply turn the knob here to turn the gas on, push this button for the ignition. Simple as that. This is basically exactly the same. You do have your on off valve here. This is your push for the ignition here. This one also is slightly different. It also has a lock button here. So when it is down, you uh, cannot push the button, but when the lock is up, you can push it. So it's a bit of a, a safety feature that they've incorporated into this. As I said, removable base is really handy because you can put the torch on the base. If you need to put the torch down, completely safe, it's not gonna fall over. So first of all, when you get your torch, you must always make sure that the nozzle here is always turned to the off position. When I had this, this was actually in the on position, in the open position which is very dangerous if you don't realize that's in the on position because when you start to add the gas in at this end, the gas will come simply straight out of the nozzle. You really just, but just make sure that when you have the torch, that you always turn the nozzle in this direction. And this has a little indicator here, always turn that to the off position first of all. So this is the end of where the butane goes in. We've got the small little canisters like this here. Again, doesn't have to be a particular brand, but this is a butane canister. They will come with um, nozzles fixed into the lid, but I find that the one that is actually already attached uh, on the can is exactly the one that you need. So first of all, make sure, double check, make sure this nozzle is in the off position. Very, very important. Hold the can upside down. All right, so this is the torch. The torch now is upside down. Then get your canister of gas. Now you can put the canister directly over the hole, push down and keep it pressed down and you should hear the gas being transferred from the pressurized canister here into the handle. You can do it in one continuous long motion. What they do recommend is that you pump this on and off, on and off as you go along. You know when the handle here is full of gas because it'll get colder. You'll feel the coldness working its way up the tank. And then also we know when it's full when you do get a little bit of splutter from the handle itself. So push it down. You can hear it going in, so you can, they do recommend you do pump it on and off. Obviously when you release the can, there's a little bit of gas that does escape from here. And if I keep it pushed down, I can feel that the tank here is getting colder and the coldness is working its way up. That's because the gas is being transferred into the handle itself. And we know when it's full, when very near now, because the coldness is coming right up to the handle here, nearly there. And we know when it's full, when we get that, there we go, that little bit of a splutter. What we need to do next now is just turn this tank upright, put it in the holder, and just let it sit for a few minutes just for the gas to settle. Now after a few minutes have settled, the tank is still fairly cold. Now we are ready to turn on the torch. When you turn it on, first of all, on the top of this particular model here, you've got this little bit of a, a collar. And there's a couple of holes in this collar. What you need to make sure is that the hole on the collar is alignment with the hole in the body of the nozzle. 
So you can see there, it's not. As you come round, you've got that other hole and you can virtually, well, you can actually see all the way through from one side to the other. So turn this until you can see all the way through the nozzle, just like that. Now we're ready to turn it on. Here is the lock. You make sure the lock now is upright. Turn on the gas anti-clockwise until you hear the gas escape from the nozzle. When it does, you then push your ignition. You turn the gas anti-clockwise, push the ignition and the torch lights. So you may be wondering what this collar does. Well, this is now a very, very hot flame. As you turn the collar, you reduce the amount of oxygen being drawn into the flame. So as you turn that, you can see how it becomes a lot more of a softer flame. Keep going and you have that. You'll very rarely ever use that type of flame. But as you turn the collar, you increase the amount of oxygen being drawn through the nozzle into the flame until you get this flame here. And this now is the hottest part of the flame, which is right on the tip here. That is the hottest flame. The amount of flame, the longer the flame can be adjusted simply by turning the gas here, turn the gas down, and the flame gets smaller. So you can control the size of the flame purely by using the gas control here. Turn the gas off, simple, all the way off here. And then here's your lock switch. Always make sure that that is down so it cannot be ignited. So that's pretty much all I need to say about this new torch. If you do happen to knock the torch over um, and the gas gets shaken about a bit, or it falls over or lies down, always return to the upright position and always wait another minute or so, again, just for that gas to settle, because what you don't want to do is to have any sort of liquid gas right up on the nozzle here and it happens to spurt out. So always wait for that gas to settle before then you turn it back on. But I always keep the base on it. I'll be taking that one now and I'll be putting that one in its place and I'll be using that now on our At The Bench films and our YouTube films um, because I think um, you do need two torches. You need these little small little creme brulee torches for the very, very delicate stuff. And then because you have bigger rings, thicker rings, cuffs, bangles, that sort of thing, you do need these slightly larger torches to enable you to do both types of work. There we go. Please subscribe if you haven't done already. Smash that little bell icon to let you know when films go live on our YouTube channel. If that is something that you're into, don't forget, please give this film a thumbs up, like, share it with your friends. Really do appreciate it. But in the meantime, my name's Andrew Berry for At The Benches YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, check us out next time. Take care. Bye-bye. One last thing before I go, please don't go just yet, because some of you may be wondering, well, how am I going to dispose of this torch, knowing that there is gas within the handle? And it's a really, really good question. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go outside into the total fresh air outside, not confined space like this, outside. I'm going to get my little scribe and I'm going to push down on the valve just like that, when I'm outside, and I'm gonna make sure that there is no gas left in the handle. It'll just simply disperse into the air with no problems at all. Never do this inside a confined space like this because it is very, very dangerous. Remember, this is flammable, it is gas. It is very, very dangerous. So go outside into the open air where there's nobody else around. Do not breathe this in, hold this at arm's length, get something so you can push down in the valve and just let all that gas out. Once all the gas is out, you then can safely dispose of this. So there we go. Just thought I'd better add that in case you are wondering what I'm gonna do with it because it is dangerous to throw a pressurized container out in the trash. Okay, thank you, take care, bye-bye.